This video is kindly brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful online presence. Hi, my name's Janelle and welcome back to Rosary Apparel. In today's video, I'm going to be attempting to make an outfit that I saw on Instagram. The outfit I'm going to be trying to recreate today is this one here, worn by Closet Vomit Fashion. I am obsessed with this adorable button-up mini dress. I think it will be such a versatile addition to my wardrobe, and I just love how they've styled this one dress so many different ways. It just inspires me so much. So grab yourself a cup of tea and get comfy, and let's see if I can make a dress that's even half as beautiful as this dress in the Instagram. Instagram. So to help me make this dress, I'm going to be using McCall's 7834, which after purchasing I realised was a Laura Ashley pattern, which is really cool. For my dress, I'm going to be using version B, which has a more traditional collar, but I'm going to be using the longer sleeves of version C. The fabric I'm using is a ditzy floral rayon fabric that I picked up from Spotlight, which I think has a really similar vibe to the dress in the Instagram. So first things first, I need to figure out which pattern pieces I need for version B of the dress. And because I like to keep my pattern intact for use later on, I decided to trace out all the pattern pieces I needed. To do this, I just use the cheapest possible baking paper available at Coles, which is actually terrible for baking, but is perfect for tracing out patterns. Having a bit of a closer look at the Instagram, I realised that the waistline of the dress is a little bit higher than the natural waist, and so I decided to fold my pattern pieces along the petite fold line that was already on the pattern pieces to shorten the bodice slightly. I then laid out all of my pattern pieces onto my fabric and then cut them all out. Now that all my pattern pieces are cut, it's time to start making this dress. First up, I marked out the darts on the front bodice pieces and then stitched them in place. I then took the front bodice template piece and laid it directly onto the fabric and snipped where the center fold lines will be in a way to kind of mark their position. I then took the fabric pieces over to my iron and pressed along where I made those snips. I then stitched the folded fabric in place and this is going to be where the buttons will be stitched along the front of the dress. Then with right sides together, I placed the bodice fronts onto the bodice back and stitched them together like this. Next, I ironed on some interfacing to the collar pieces as well as to the cuff and collar band pieces, as this will give them just a little bit of extra structure, especially because the rayon fabric is so lightweight and flimsy. Then with the right sides together, I stitched the collar pieces together like this. I then turned the collar right side out and carefully pushed out the corner points with a knitting needle. I then give it a good press and we now have a collar that once folded looks like this. Next, I took one of the collar band pieces and then matching the notches together, I placed the collar on top with right sides together. I then placed the second collar band piece on top and as you can see here I've pressed the other raw edge in by about one centimeter or so and then I stitch all of the layers together along the notched edge like this sandwiching the collar in place as I sew. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I take the bodice and with right sides together, I pin and stitch the non-pressed collar band into place along the neck edge of the bodice. I then fold and tuck the raw edge of the seam that we just sewed into the collar and then pin the pressed edge of the collar band in place, enclosing all of the raw edges inside the collar. If you've never made a shirt with a collar like this before, then this part may seem a little overwhelming and tricky. And to be completely honest with you, it is a little bit fiddly. But once you've done it a few times, it really isn't that difficult. I just probably wouldn't recommend using a flimsy fabric like rayon for your first try though. And I now have a beautiful collar nicely attached to my bodice. Before I get started on the sleeves, let's just take a quick moment to talk about the sponsor of this video. This video has been very kindly sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful online presence and launch your passion project. Whether you'd like to start making and selling your own products, create a beautiful portfolio to showcase your work, write a blog, or simply create any website of any kind, on Squarespace you can create your dream website all by yourself, no knowledge or background needed in coding whatsoever. I've personally been using Squarespace to run the Rosary Apparel website since 2016 and at the time I did not have any extra money to put towards a custom website build so when I discovered Squarespace and just how easy they made it to create your dream website on your own I was so excited and honestly I ended up making my website in just an afternoon that they just make the whole process so stress-free and easy. Something that I really appreciate about Squarespace and have found super valuable in the five plus years I've been using the platform is their award-winning customer service. I've only ever had to get in touch a few times with a couple of questions and every time it's been such an easy process to actually chat to someone about the problems I'm having and each time I've contacted them my issues have been resolved 100% and in a really quick timely manner. So if you'd like to create a website of your own, then head to squarespace.com for a free trial, which I totally recommend you do so you can test out just how easy it is to build your dream website for yourself. And then when you're ready to launch your beautiful new website, head to squarespace.com slash rosary apparel for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this video and let's get back to sewing. Now to make the sleeves. Firstly, with right sides together, I fold the sleeves in half and stitch them together, leaving a good 10 centimeters or four inches unsewn at the ends like this. I then fold and press the unstitched ends of the sleeves to enclose the raw edges. and then stitch the folded edges in place. Next, I take the cuff pieces, which are basically just rectangles of fabric, and stitch them together like this, making sure one of the rectangle's longer edges has been pressed in by about a centimetre. Then with right sides together, I pin the non-pressed edge of the cuff to the end of the sleeve. I gathered up the end of the sleeve slightly to help make it fit along the cuff better and to add a tiny bit of puffiness to the sleeve as well. Once the cuff is attached to the sleeve, I then tuck the raw edge to the inside of the cuff and then stitch the pressed edge of the cuff in place onto the inside of the sleeve. Again, this sounds really complicated, but it's honestly not that difficult. And once the sleeves were done, it was time to attach them to the bodice of the dress. For some reason, this pattern didn't have pockets, which was so sad, so instead I'm using my own pocket template, which is a free template you can find a link to download in the description of this video. And once I'd cut the pocket pieces out, I overlocked the raw edges to prevent them from fraying. I then placed the pockets with right sides together onto the top 
skirt tier, approximately 10 centimeters or four inches from the top edge of the skirt. I then stitched the pockets in place. And then once stitched in place, I placed the skirt front onto the skirt back and stitched them together along the side edges and pockets like this. Next, to make the second tier of the skirt, I stitched three larger rectangles of fabric together to get a nice long piece of fabric that ended up being about double the length of the first skirt tier. And then I stitched two rows of gathering stitches along the top edge of the second tier. I gently pulled on the gathering stitches to gather up the fabric of the second tier until it was approximately the same size as the first tier. Then I stitched the two skirt tiers together with right sides together. Once stitched, I give the gathers a good press. And then sew another two rows of gathering stitches along the very top edge of the skirt. I then gathered up the skirt until it was the same size as the dress bodice and then stitched the bodice to the skirt. Once the skirt was stitched in place, I sewed another seam approximately one centimeter or so from the previous seam, which will create a casing for some elastic because we're going to make an elasticated waist. In order to thread the elastic through, I made sure to leave a small opening like this. I then measured a piece of elastic that sat comfortably around my waist and then used a safety pin to thread the elastic into the casing I just made along the waist of the dress. Once thread all the way through, I stitched the ends of elastic together with a zigzag stitch and then sewed the opening closed. And the dress now has a super comfortable elasticated waist. Next, I marked out the position of the buttonholes along the front of the dress and also on the cuffs of the sleeves. And then used my buttonhole stitch of my sewing machine to sew the buttonholes in place. I then hand stitched the buttons onto the dress and then all that was left to do was hem the bottom edge of the skirt. And my adorable button up dress is complete. So how does this dress compare to the one in the Instagram? I am so, so happy with how this dress has turned out. I think it looks pretty much exactly the same as the dress in the Instagram, which I was not actually expecting. I thought it would look a little bit different, but yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. And I feel like this is going to be such a good addition to my wardrobe. I actually also really love just how busy this fabric is, even though it is just a simple black and white print, the Ditsy Floral just makes it that little bit extra special, and I think it was the perfect fabric choice for this style of dress. 
I also love that I can now style this dress so many different ways. It's going to be such a great dress for layering over winter, um, which I'm currently in here in Australia at the moment. So I'm excited to start wearing this dress right away. But I also think it's going to be so nice to wear on its own during those in-between seasons where it's a little bit chilly, but warm enough for not needing any layers, if that makes sense. I'm just really, really excited about this dress. And it was a fun challenge to see if I can make a dress just by looking at a photo on Instagram. And yeah, I think I did a pretty good job, even if I do say so myself. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed this video and that it's inspired you to have a go at making some of the outfits you find on Instagram instead of just clicking through and purchasing them. If you did enjoy this video, it would mean a lot to me if you could give it a like and subscribe to this channel for more sewing videos like this one. And if you haven't already, come and follow me on Instagram at Rosary Apparel if you'd like to see some of the things I'm up to. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.